Hi, You Can Heal family. Thank you for joining me. My name is Sheena Major, and I'm a life coach, and I'm helping you grow and learn to love yourself and heal from the pain of your past by reading God's Word together. And hopefully you've been enjoying our time. This has gone from read with me to study the Old Testament with me. And I think that's fitting because we're digging in a little more um, this time around as we go through the Old Testament compared to the New Testament. So if you haven't checked checked out the New Testament, go ahead and um, listen to that playlist. If I'm not putting up, getting the video out at 7 a.m., um, just know there is still Bible out there that you can listen to. <laughs> oh gosh, I thank God for Lisa Smiles and all of you who've been listening and just spending time with me in the word it means a lot it really does it does not go unnoticed and god your reward is waiting god sees your diligence and your effort and your desire to want to know him better so it's nice to be on this journey with you through studying the bible and also just healing and growing and wanting to become better people filled with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and all the fruits of the Spirit and all the good things that God is. So with that being said, we are starting chapter 43. We're going to read chapter 43 today. And um, it ended, we ended the last time with, you know, Simeon having to stay back and all the other brothers going home to tell Jacob that they had to bring Benjamin back in order to bring food home. And, um, you know, Jacob wasn't going for it. You know, he was saying, you know, Joseph's already gone. Simeon's stuck there. And now you want to take Benjamin too. Forget it. And um, he said it would bring gray, his gray head down to the grave in deep sorrow if he did that. So this is where, that's where we left off. So let's begin reading chapter 43. Here we go. Joseph's brother's second journey to Egypt. But there was no relief from the terrible famine throughout the land. When the grain they had brought from Egypt was almost gone, Jacob said to his sons, Go again and buy us a little food. Now remember I just said he didn't want to send his son back, but now he's realizing they're hungry because <laughs> the grain that Joseph did send back with them is gone. In verse 3, But Judah said, The man wasn't joking when he warned that we couldn't see him again unless Benjamin came along and the man they're talking about is their brother. If you let him come with us, we will go down and buy some food. But if you don't let Benjamin go, we may as well stay at home. Remember that the man said, you won't be allowed to come and see me unless your brother is with you. Why did you ever tell him you had another brother? Jacob moaned. Why did you have to treat me with such cruelty? But the man specifically asked us about our family, they replied. He wanted to know whether our father was still living. And he asked us if we had another brother. Oh, hold on, I think I turned too many pages. Yeah, I did. Sorry, he, oh my goodness. <laughs> hold on. He asked us if we had another brother so we told him, how could we have known he would say, bring me your brother? So I like how Joseph was trying to find out if his father was still alive and his brother by questioning them. And it was a way for him to bring everybody back together. And that's what God is. That's how he works. Like he's about bringing people together instead of separating and dividing. And so many families are split and divisions going on and Matter of fact, I just had a conversation yesterday with like an in-law family member. And, um, you know, it's interesting when people share and like you don't, you don't know what's going on with people unless people choose to open up and talk and then that's when you can get some relief. Huh, yeah, I tell you. The best, the best thing we can do as a person is learn how to listen. I'm really learning that over the years. Like, it's so much better to listen than to be talking all the time. 
because um, I, I guess for me it is because I've learned that through listening you, you gain understanding you gain compassion and um, I don't know it's helping me to be a better person because you, you begin to understand people and not think that your point of view is always right or you're always right or I'm always right but um, just learning to listen and plus people want to be heard and I know for a long time I needed that I needed people to hear me and believe things I was saying and um, so I'm just really really aware really aware of the importance of being a good listener yeah so that's that's those are my thoughts on that and that's what's coming up for me as I'm reading and I'm trusting that it's helped you so let's keep going so if this is your first time as I'm reading the word I'm sharing what's running through my mind and allowing it to be released and, and trusting that God is using me to help you grow and heal and get better understanding about yourself and you know with God's word that's how we get to know who we are by knowing him <laughs> I'm telling you it's the best kept secret in town so keep listening keep tuning in so we left off in verse 7 how could we have known he would say bring me your brother now verse 8 says Judah said to his father send the boy with me and we will be on our way otherwise we will all die of starvation and not only we but you and our little ones I personally guarantee his safety if I don't bring him back to you then let me bear the blame forever for we could have gone and returned twice by this time if you had let him come without delay so now they're putting this <laughs> their their wrongful deed of selling their brother now they're putting it all on their dad all on Jacob like you know if we don't if you don't let us go you know this is all on you that we don't eat well no brothers if you didn't sell your brother in the first place he wouldn't be <laughs> in this predicament of having to bring the younger one back oh gee verse 11 but but then again in this story is so good because it's through their sinful act of killing their killing their brother off by throwing him in this pet that God turned it around and used it for good as we'll see later on in the story and I just think that it's such a good lesson like things bad happen to us but it's for something good God will turn it around you know that one good song that, uh, um, I think it's called God turns it around <laughs> but I was on my playlist for a long time I was singing that one I think the, the, the name of the man is John something but it's a really good song but God turns things around when things aren't looking good he'll use it for good and that's a great scripture in Romans um, oh God what is it what God meant for, for what Satan meant for evil God uses for good yeah something like that all right let me keep going because I'll just be off on a tangent and we will never get through the chapter so in verse 11, so their father Jacob finally said to them, if it can't be avoided, then at least do this. Fill your bags with the best products of the land. Take them to the man as gifts, balm, honey, spices, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Now pistachios and almonds are my absolute favorites. They really are, especially pistachios. You know, I'm learning through trying to get my gut health together <laughs> that almonds have like lectins in them and you should eat them blanched and take the skin off with the skin off. But they're so tasty. All right, there again. See, I'm reading and I'm just like, wow, they had pistachios. It's actually in the Bible right here. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know why that's tickling me. But... I don't know, just reading the word is so comforting. It's like you get to sit here. My house is quiet right now. The kids are off to school and I'm waiting for the daycare kids to come. And I had my hot tea and I just sipped on it very mindfully, feeling the warmth of it go down and just settling in and staying grounded and just letting the peace of God come over me before I started reading. And I don't know, it just... It's comforting for me to see the word pistachio and almond in the Bible because it makes it real. You know, it makes God real and the word um, alive. 
so yeah you know you just gotta take it if I'm reading this on this here YouTube <laughs> you're just gonna get it all because I'm just being myself and I really do enjoy myself <laughs> and I don't know why I get tickled but I guess it just amazes me that I'm actually being this vulnerable and reading reading this way it, and, and I, I know that the enemy's like oh don't read today or if you read today don't share it with the world just just let's keep this to yourself but you know I am pushing through and I'm not going to listen to that old serpent because we learned he is a sneaky crafty snake right he is no good and he just wants to throw us off track so let's keep going verse 13 then take your brother and go back to the man may God Almighty give you mercy as you go before the man that he might release Simeon and return Benjamin and if I must bear the anguish of their deaths, then so be it. So they took Benjamin and the gifts and doubled the money and hurried to Egypt, where they presented themselves to Joseph. When Joseph saw that Benjamin was with them, he said to the manager of his household, These men will eat with me this noon. Take them inside and prepare a big feast. Okay, so when they got there... Joseph saw Benjamin and immediately they were going to be brought inside for a feast. So the man did as he was told and took them to Joseph's palace. So see, these brothers were up to no good and they're still brought into the palace. Oh, that's good. I want to stop and look at the commentary. So I'm going to mark we're on verse 18. I have a pencil here today so I'm not trying to figure out where, where we left off but let's look at the commentary for verses 8 through 9, 11 and 12 before we go on I think this is a good place to take a pause alright it says in the 22 years since they had sold Joseph his brothers had become better men alright Judah who had suggested selling Joseph okay so it was Judah who suggested the selling of Joseph and now offered his own life as a surety for Benjamin's life. So back in verse 37, verses 26 and 27, it was Judah's idea to sell Joseph. And now he's like, okay, Father, you know, Jacob, if you let me take my brother back, I'll be in charge of this whole thing. And if he doesn't come back, you know, it's on me. So it looks like over the 22 years, they grew up a little bit. Verse 11 commentary says, the famine in Canaan was not total. It was grain, the main staple, that was now depleted. Oh, okay. So verse 11 said, So their father Jacob finally said to them, If it can't be avoided, then at least do this. Fill your bags with the best products of land. Okay, so when I was talking about the pistachios and the almonds, the spices and all that, so the main staple was what was gone. The famine in Canaan was not total. So the main that was the main staple, the grain. So I guess that goes back to the dream where the withered heads, the stalks, um, consumed the fatter ones. So I never picked that up. I thought there was nothing. So that was that's interesting for me. That's interesting. Verse 12, someone's mistake. So this is Israel talking. The old Jacob would have kept the money without a second thought. So let's go back. Verse 12. Take double the money that you found in your sacks as it was probably someone's mistake. So Jacob, remember he was conniving before he wrestled with God and became Israel. So before he would have kept the money, this time he's like, send it back. Take double back what was brought with you when you returned without your brother. So yeah, I guess everybody grew up a little bit. And now verse 12 on the commentary. Okay, I just read that. Someone's mistake. And that's interesting. And it says in the commentary, this is Israel talking. Because now he's acknowledging, oh, you know, the money that Joseph put in the sack was doubled. And he's saying, was put there maybe by mistake. So let's double and bring back a double portion so that's a far way from Jacob to come remember he didn't even 
acknowledge God and he had to wrestle with God and and now he's um, now he's um, wanting to give back more than what was given and before he was a taker remember he took the birthright from his brother now he's you know being more giving and I think over time as we grow you know we have to learn to be givers and not just take I remember being pregnant with blessing my daughter this is your first time listening I have a daughter she's going to be 17 tomorrow on Wednesday and um, I was in you know in and out of the relationship with her father when I was pregnant and I was teaching at the time I was an assistant teaching teaching at the time for um, in a um, a BOCES program and the guy I was working with I remember him saying to me you know Sheena some people are just takers you're a giver and um, this person is just taking and taking from you and that was the first time I heard that as it was applying to my own life and I still remember it to this day you know some 17 (laughs) years later but just be careful of people in your life who are always trying to get something from you and deplete you, but never never offering it back to you. Because remember, a healthy relationship goes both ways. But if you're always the one giving and never receiving from that other side, then you need to take a look at that and evaluate that and, and ask God to, to sort some things out for you. Amen. All right, so let's keep going. We're on verse 18. And remember, we left off where um, Joseph said, prepare a feast and bring my brothers in the palace. So they were bad. So now the brothers were badly frightened when they saw where they were being taken. It's because of the money returned to us in our sacks, they said. He plans to pretend that we stole it. Then he will seize us as slaves and take our donkeys. So now they're trying to figure out, why are we going in the palace? They're getting all nervous. As the brothers arrived at the entrance to the palace, they went over to the man in charge of Joseph's household. They said to him, Sir, after our first trip to Egypt to buy food, as we were returning home, we stopped for the night and opened our sacks. The money we had used to pay for the grain was there in our sacks. So now they're trying to talk to the to the guy the officer here in the house that cover their tracks like hey whoa whoa hold on <laughs> we we took the money out it was back in there the money we had used to pay for the grain was there in our sacks here it is we have brought it back again we also have additional money to buy more grain we have no idea how the money got into our sacks so now they're trying to they're you know being honest this time relax Verse 23, don't worry about it. The household manager told them, your God, the God of your ancestors, must have put it there. We collected your money all right. Then he released Simeon and brought him out to them. The brothers were then led into the palace and given water to wash their feet. Water, 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 Lisa smiles. (laughs) And food for their donkeys. They were told they would be eating there. So they prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon. When Joseph came, they gave him their gifts and bowed low before him. Now that's verse 26. Remember Joseph's dream. Remember Joseph's dream. This is why the brothers got angry and killed him off in the first place. Because they were mad that Joseph was saying, what are we going to bow down to you? And look at that. There it is, verse 26. When Joseph came, they gave him their gifts and bowed low before him. He asked them how they had been getting along, and then he said, How is your father, the old man you spoke about? Is he still alive? So Joseph's still getting information here. Yes, they replied, he is alive and well. Then they bowed again before him. See, when God says something, he is going to do it. This dream is coming to pass coming back makes me think of so many dreams I have and um, yeah just keep doing what you're called to do for anybody listening who's got dreams inside of them and, and things that 
who believe that the Lord showed them, it'll come to pass if we keep putting one foot in front of the other, not giving up, pressing on, and doing something every day toward that goal, that destiny of ours. Verse 29, looking at his brother Benjamin, Joseph asked, is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? May God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph made a hasty exit because he was overcome with emotion for his brother and wanted to cry. So he knew it was his brother. He asked anyway if that was him, and then he had to leave again. Joseph's so emotional. He left. Um, remember the chapter before? He said to step out of the room too. So he was just overwhelmed with emotion and love. You know, love is a good thing. It's a really good thing. Going into his private room, he wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, keeping himself under control. Bring on the food, he ordered. Joseph ate by himself, and his brothers were served at a separate table. Now that's interesting. I wonder why. Let me, I'm going to go down to the commentary for verse 32. It says, Refuse to eat with Hebrews, a religious separation. These Hebrews from Canaan ate animals, some of which were sacred to the Egyptians. Okay, so they don't know he's their brother yet, so Joseph couldn't eat with them because, remember, he, according to them, he's an Egyptian, so the brothers had to eat, eat this feast um, separate. So that's an interesting piece of news information. And then let's just look at the commentary for 24 and 25 too, which talked about the washing their feet. Because they wore open sandals on dusty trails, their feet were dirty and tired. Yeah, so that was custom to wash your feet before entering. And the gifts, items brought from Canaan to give to the Egyptian ruler. Yeah, so that commentary is pretty self-explanatory. Alright, verse 32. Joseph ate by himself and his brothers were served at a separate table. The Egyptians sat at their own table because Egyptians despise Hebrews and refused to eat with them. Joseph told each of his brothers where to sit, and to their amazement, he seated them in the order of their ages, from oldest to youngest. Could you imagine being his brothers, and like he sits you down, and you're looking around. I could just see them all looking around at each other, like with their mouths open, hands up, like what? <laughs> oh my gosh, we're really in for it now. Ah, uh, that's so cool. Their food was served to them from Joseph's own table. He gave the largest serving to Benjamin. Now see, remember, Benjamin was Rachel's favorite. Five times as much as to any of the others. So they all feasted and drank freely with him. Well, that concludes the chapter, verse 43. And what an enjoyable chapter. Like, to think that someone was hurt so bad by family members and Joseph took them in. He cried over the sight of his youngest brother. He brought them in the palace, washed their feet, you know, served them a meal and just loved on them. It's such a lesson. It's such a lesson. Now, does this mean that people from our past who have hurt us Am I going to sit down with my situationships and, you know, invite them over for dinner? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it's just when these people come to mind who have done you wrong, like I said in the other reading, the other study time, just pray for them. When they come in your head, just um, say a prayer and then just let, let the thought of them pass right on by like a cloud in the sky. You know when you look up at the sky and the clouds are moving and then you're, you're looking at it because it looks like a shape it looks like a bunny or you know whatever and then pretty soon that cloud's gone that's what you have to do with these thoughts that come in that try to rob you and try to take away your peace just let it pass on by say a prayer and let, let it pass let their, the thought or the name or the image or the situation or the memory pass right on by because you don't want it to become stuck inside you and part of you so that's a good exercise that I, I tell people when I'm coaching them or just in conversation, like, just let it pass on by like a cloud in the sky. <laughs> Amen.
All right, you can heal family. That's our time together today. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed the study with me. I did enjoy my time with the Lord <laughs> and you. So we'll be back um, again. The read with the study with me will be posted at seven. My ultimate goal is every day that video hits hits your notification bell, and just believe and trust that I'm doing my very best to bring you this good news, God's word. And if it's your first time, I'm reading through the Open Bible and using, uh, which is the New Living Translation. Um, so that's that's the book, the Bible we're using to to have our time together. All right, you can heal family. I love you so much. Always remember that true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Oh, <laughs> you didn't get rid of me yet. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, you are amazing and your word reigns and rules forever and ever. It's an everlasting word that can teach us and can grow us. And I pray that my You Can Heal family that's tuning in, that's listening, that you will grow them and bless them and allow this time together to be meaningful, to be set apart, to be anointed, so that the hearing of the word will not just be words, but it will be something that's changing them on the inside so that their lives will become more fruitful and more disciplined and more aware that they will um, grow and desire to change so that they can impact the world, that they will be able to um, change lives through their presence, through their countenance, through their movement, and be the people that God um, has called them and ordained them to be. Because you are real. You are alive and well, and your spirit moves and lives among us. And we thank you for that, Jesus. Just thank you for being holy, for being righteous, for being true, for being our Abba Father. Take care of us on this day and cause us to grow closer and closer to you because of the desire that you put in each of their hearts. My prayer um, is heartfelt and I trust that you are doing a great work in each of the lives that you can help family. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll talk tomorrow. Bye.